President Biden was searching for a legacy appointment, and not just for the current polarized times. Given her background and her career, might she make a difference when it comes to court opinions? No, she comes from that trial court background, which for trial lawyers like myself, we like that perspective. Somebody that's been there and seen the witnesses, seen how evidence comes about. So she's going to bring that new perspective as well as that of a public defender. She'll be the first justice, if confirmed, to be a public defender in her past, um, which is something that is part of our constitutional form of government. So she's going to bring new perspectives to this court, which is uh, missing quite a bit of what her resume brings. Yeah, she was a trial judge for, what, eight years before joining the D.C. Circuit. And that is rare when you look at the experience for the current bench. Perhaps even rarer than that is her service as an assistant public defender. She comes from a family of people in public service. How will that play in her decision making? You know, you, you noted she's got police officers as uncles. Her brother was served in the military. Father and mother were school teachers before moving into a principal role and a lawyer role. Um, this is a person from a grounded family. Um, she's going to bring real life experience to the bench. The public defender role is going to be talked about quite a bit here over the next couple of days. But it's something that she's going to bring from a perspective, um, especially with sentencing guidelines that she worked on, um, that is uh, missing from the court right now. When Sonia Sotomayor joined the court and David Souter was retiring, Chief Justice John Roberts said a new arrival can cause you to fundamentally take a look at how things are decided. Roberts has had to wrestle with the court and politics, something he derides. Would Jackson's arrival cause a new look at the decision-making process itself? You know, that's a fascinating question, Bruce, and it's one of the first times I've heard it around the country. Um, you know, Chief Justice Roberts, you know, he's, his opinions in relation to civil rights um, is one where somebody like Judge Brown Jackson can come in and, sh and talk about the real experiences of somebody as an African-American female that has not been discussed ever in the history of our Supreme Court. And her voice and her background, her experience, real life experience, could very well bring an education to those members of the court who don't have a similar background. You know, when you look at history, I think it was the late Justice Byron White weighing in on the issue of one justice and the impact they could make. He basically said one justice changes the whole court. There will be new relationships. Could the dynamics of how things are decided and the art of persuasion cause a different approach and potentially shift the court dynamic? You know, that's a great question. I hope that is still the case. Um, I hope we have not become so polarized in our recent selections that everybody is entrenched in their 6-3 division. Um, Justice White's opinions are going to be coming back into light. Um, he wrote a dissent in Roe v. Wade. I think that his opinions are going to be dis uh, studied seriously. But as far as the personality and being able to change the decision-making dynamic, I think a justice like Brown Jackson has as large a possibility, a larger percentage chance of making that kind of difference um, of any justice we've had joined the bench in quite a while. Rob Kane, I appreciate your perspective. Thank you for your time. You bet. Jen.